Hi everybody, uh, in this episode I'm going to be covering the new updates for the uh, Premiere Pro, the most recent updates for Premiere Pro version 11.1 .1 of Premiere Pro, which is uh, a last episode I covered the essential graphics, and this one I am covering what they call essential sound found under this window drop down in here. And first thing I'm going to do to show this feature is uh, they've, they've really made it a lot easier to do sound mixing in Premiere, added some really cool features, and they made some cool round tripping stuff from uh, Premiere to Audition and back. But I'm going to go up to a window, and I'm going to go workspaces, and I'm going to arrange for audio, and also you can just click on this thing up here. Now sometimes, uh, uh, initially it might not bring up the, the newest layout because it, it might have saved your older layout. So what you're going to do is click on this little tab right here, this little pull down tab, and say reset to saved layout it'll update it to the new layout uh, which brings up this essential sound panel and from now on after you do that whenever you hit this arrangement up here it will bring up this panel for you but yeah first thing you ought to do is pull down and say reset to saved layout because if you had an old, earlier layout saved under audio then it's going to be different now what they've got over here is they've got these different tabs set up for dialogue, music, sound effects, and ambience. Uh, what you're going to basically do is anything you have selected down inside your timeline, when you click on these, it will designate that as either dialogue track or music track or sound effects, and it will automatically add filters to it. Uh, it's kind of like their uh, Lumetri color panel in a way, that once you start changing things over here, it adds those necessary filters onto those clips, which is kind of cool. For instance, dialogue here, if we select these tracks here, and we go up and hit dialogue, it just defined these as dialogue tracks. And then under dialogue, you have certain things to fix here. And you can automatically match the levels here, which is a really nice little feature here. Uh, but EQ, as you change the EQ, watch this as we start to change these. Let's go and pull this down, turn these, uh, turn this audio to like an old radio or on the telephone. Let's make this a telephone. And now you click this here and look up at it. It has added this graphic equalizer here to the clip that I had selected as well as these other ones that I had selected. So it adds those filters, those effects to every one of those clips that I had selected. I'm going to undo that. Now as we play that audio... Kellen, what you working on over there? It sounds like it's over a telephone. So it's added those effects. I'm going to undo those. But one little, one really cool feature about this is that you, when we select these things, we kind of see that these audio levels are, are way different as we play through. And actually, let's bring up our, our audio mixer here so we can see the levels. Looks awesome. Her audio is around like in, uh, below negative 12, between negative 24 and negative 12. You didn't even look at it! And his is above uh, negative 12 there. So these audio levels are kind of inconsistent. If we select this here and we turn these to dialogue tracks and we go to auto match, you'll notice that these waveforms have kind of changed level. Let's take a look at these now. Uh-huh. Looks awesome. Hers is around negative 12. You didn't even look at it! His was brought down, so it's right around negative 12. Come on, Becky! Okay, fine. And that one it brought up a little too loud, but that it gave us a really good starting point there. And some of these, of course, whenever you're audio mixing, you're gonna have to go through and do some minor fix-ups. In fact, we can now select this, hit G, go negative gain by about six decibels and bring hers back down. Okay, fine. Still a little too loud, but there, there you go. And they have all these other items here belonging to dialogue. Things to fix up dialogue, things like uh, making the voice a little more clear, using dynamics, uh, EQing them. You can uh, equalize those, take out. If you need to take out some bass or, or add some bass, you can do that as well. So a lot of these features here are just going to take some experimenting working with. I will do a more advanced tutorial on this in the future after I've had a chance to play around with it and actually do a project with it. So there's also these other tabs here. Uh, the dialogue is very helpful. Uh, let's go to ambient. It's actually, uh, this one is ambient right here. It's outside the sound of birds chirping and things like that. In fact, uh, let's, let's solo this down here and I'll press play. And right now we're not hearing the dialogue in here, dialogue in here but we're hearing the uh, birds chirping. And let's do a couple things here. First of all, select our dialogue tracks and we are going to go up and define those as dialogue. And these have already been defined as sound effects, so you can actually, uh, unintentionally, you can hit clear audio type. But now we can select these here. And like I said, if you accidentally choose one of these types, like music and it's not music, you just hit clear audio type, it gets rid of that, and you can redesignate that. You can um, redefine them. I'm going to hit dialogue here, and I'm going to go to auto match and auto match all my levels there. And I uh, can see that it, 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 uh, some of these where it's like really quiet, it boosted them way up. So those need to be fixed. And those would be need to be manipulated. But now I can select this audio track here as we play through this. Can you just pause it? I'd like to say a few words. We've got the audio playing, and then this is obviously too loud here. So I'm going to uh, hit solo on this, and we're going to designate this as ambience. And this is kind of cool here. They've got, uh, first of all, loudness, kind of the same thing. You might match, auto match all your your audio levels here if. If you have a whole bunch of different ambient sound, you can hit auto match and auto match them, but uh, it doesn't need to be matched because it is one single track. This actually brought it down to what it would consider uh, an ambient level here. 
but now uh, you also have reverb. If the ambient, if somebody, for example, somebody is inside and there's outside ambient noise, like cars driving by or birds chirping outside or whatever you have outside, but they're inside, you can choose different types of reverb for outside ambience. If they're inside of a large uh, room or something like that, room ambient noise and things like that, I help with room tone. But uh, this is really help. But in this instance, it won't work because they are outside and the sounds are outside. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, but this is really cool right here, the stereo width. If you're working with a stereo stereo monitoring monitoring system and you're going to be sending this out on like YouTube or anything else on a television that's going to be in stereo, this adds a lot more depth to the sound. And in fact, if we click on this and let's bring it up, make it kind of extreme just so you can kind of hear the difference. And let's play this with and without. And here's and here's without. See, in, in the stereo signals, that just makes it a little bit more kind of going back and forth and gives a little bit more like depth or just realism to it. And this is really helpful with a mono file as well. If you have a mono file, it's just one single track. This adds a little bit of depth to your stereo here. So now if we want to fix levels, we can just individually select these things here, go down to the level and turn that one down specifically. Now the other options that you have here are sound effects and music. Sound effects, I'm not putting any sound effects in here right now, but you can see that it's also got the auto match and the same thing, sort of a reverb. And each function that you have on all four of those categories, you're going to have the pan as well. It's actually kind of nice because you can do a quick pan to the left or to the right, and it does it for the entire file. It doesn't keyframe it. You can go in and individually keyframe those things if you need the, the pan to change. But if you want like a sound effect playing in the left speaker or the right speaker, you can quickly pan it one way or the other. But with music, let's bring in some music here. Before we do that, let's get our uh, sound effects kind of balanced out here. I'm going to select these two tracks here, play, and get my the volume on these where they sound good, right about there. And that's nice. You can kind of play this live while you're turning this up and down. Get it exactly where you like it. I like it right about there, just kind of in the background. But now as we have the music playing, let's select our music and go and designate this as a music track. One thing that's really cool with the with the music track, well, first of all, you got your loudness here. You can change your auto match for all your music here. If we hit that, it'll notice how it auto leveled the music there, got it to where it and brought down the louder parts. Uh, you've got this duration thing right here. If you're trying to get your audio to, to match, if it's just, and this only helps when it's uh, mismatched by like a few seconds or something. If it ends at the wrong time and you just need it to be like if you're doing a 30 second spot and your music's just slightly too long like 33 seconds or something like that you can change the duration without changing pitch so you check mark that and you tell it what the new target is going to be like i said if you change this to extreme it's going to sound really really weird and it's gonna let, let's solo that and listen to it in fact let's move it over here just so we can hear the music and actually that sounds okay that doesn't change the pitch but it sped it up quite a bit changed the t tempo of the music piece quite drastically actually so and it sounds like a completely different music piece so anyway but yeah on some music you'll you will really notice a change on there and like i said if you're trying to squeeze it in just by a few seconds you can check mark that and say well this actually has to be three minutes long in fact let's make this whole music track fit this whole area right here so i'm going to change this we're going to make this three minutes 20 seconds in fact, let's see how long we have to ha make this be. Say we want the music to end right there. We're going to select that and we're going to go, we're going to make it last longer. There we go. I just click and drag it to the right and there we go. And now it ends and it will want to render it to rebuild the audio file. And the music ends about the same time as the video. There we go. So that's actually a really cool feature that they've added inside of Premiere to make your music fit the time there. And it just basically slows it down and speeds it up without changing the pitch. So now we have our music start at the beginning. So those are just a quick introduction to their um, essential audio feature that they've added to Premiere Pro. If you want to see the essential graphics, that's the episode previous to this. Just look at my playlist and you'll find that. So thanks for watching.